Hey, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about ADD and ADHD. I'm a little nervous for today's video because I want to get honest with you. I don't talk a lot about my disorder and how it really affects my life, but I'm hoping you can relate. Whether you have a diagnosis or not, sometimes when we're busy, when life's feeling chaotic, it can really mimic these symptoms. So I wanna talk about little things that I do, little hacks that I've done that compensate for my brain's lack of executive function. Managing my life is one of my biggest struggles. I'm not great at prioritizing, task management, I'm not good at organization, and I'm certainly not good at just running my life. My brain is running a mile a minute, so my first and favorite hack is I always have notebooks on my desk and beside my bed. I can't fall asleep at night unless I brain dump. I unload all the things that are running through my mind. I dump everything I'm thinking about, all the things I think I have to do the next day into my notebook, and then I pick the top things and I use my electronics as my memory. So I'll send myself an email every night with the top to-dos, and I'll also set reminders with my Alexa. I have an Amazon Echo Dot in Alexa in every single room in my house, and she is the cue. Cass, it's time to get ready for your meeting, or every time I bath the lizard, I forget that she's in there. I just have zero short-term memory. So I set an alarmer, I set timers, to keep me on track and to keep me productive. So a notebook, a phone, and an Amazon Alexa really do run my life. Cassandra, here is your reminder. Get the lizard out of the tub. If you have ADHD, you probably stay up too late at night. So go ahead on your phone and set up screen time. This will shut off the internet to your devices or apps to your devices at the same time every night. So on the weekdays, I have all of my devices shut off at 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. on the weekends. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This way I'm no longer doom scrolling the internet without realizing it and staying up way too late. If you have ADHD, screen time on your phone is a must. I can't do an ADHD video without talking about cleaning because it's boring. And anytime, if you have ADHD or even if you just have a lot on your mind and you have to do a boring task, you're gonna get distracted. You're not gonna complete anything. So here are some of my absolute favorite tips. The first is always staying in one room at a time. So I use a tidy tote. You can use a laundry hamper or a big basket. And what you do as you're going through and tidying up the space, if something doesn't belong, like papers that should go in the office or kids toys that should go in the room or garbage, we don't leave the room to put it. We put it in our tidy tote to put away later. The other thing that you can do is wear rubber gloves or use one of these dusting mitts from the dollar store, something that's a visual reminder of what you're doing. I know this seems ridiculous, but if you have ADHD, you know what I'm talking about. An apron is another great way of just giving yourself that cue, I'm in cleaning mode, it's time to clean. One of the key components of executive function is organization. Not just organizing your mind and your thoughts, but organizing your physical things too, which is why people who suffer with ADHD tend to be very messy, chronically disorganized. But I'm here to tell you that you can adapt systems to compensate for your lack of ability up here. Decluttering is the best thing that you can do. Having less stuff to manage both physically and mentally is going to make your life easier. Everything needs to have a home and it needs to be really clear because if it isn't clear, we're just gonna put things all over the place. We're gonna drop it here and there and all over the place. So lots of bins and baskets and lots of labels are how you can compensate for your brain's lack of organization. Cooking is one of my biggest struggles. The truth is, I just don't enjoy it. I don't love cooking, I find it boring, so I always wander away. I tell myself I'm just gonna run down and grab something really quick from the bedroom and I completely forget that something's in the oven or on the stove, I have burnt or made an entirely huge mess. If you can relate, I have some really quick cooking hacks that definitely help keep me focused and keep me from wandering away. The first thing is storing things in my kitchen right where I use it so I don't have to move. So I bake right here, I store my baking supplies right above me, I have the coffee and tea above the kettle and the coffee maker. 
The least amount of walking is key here. The other thing that I do that helps me stay in the kitchen while I'm preparing a meal is using my tablet and putting on a movie or a show. I throw in my headphones and because I'm watching the show, I'm still cooking and engaged, but I'm not wandering away. And ADHD friendly appliances are also a must have. I love the air fryer and my Instapot because I cannot burn this stuff. These are definite must-haves if you're like me and you just get distracted because you don't love cooking. Another kitchen tip is having a meal planning binder. So meal planning is key if you have ADHD because we forget what we're having for dinner. We forget to take things out and we have to get a lot of takeout or eat sandwiches. So having a meal planning binder and an alarm in my phone every Sunday to write out my meal plan, it's on the side of the fridge and if I have trouble coming up with ideas, I have all of the recipes and ideas in one easy to find binder. And I also love this all out of pad. So if we're out of milk or bread or anything else that I need, I can check it off as I'm thinking about it and then just tear this away and bring this to the grocery store with me. I don't have to write a second list. I don't have to think, so I'm no longer forgetting what we need. I'd like to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. HelloFresh just makes my life easier. It simplifies meal planning, it simplifies cooking, and it's delicious. HelloFresh chefs really know how to diversify your menu with seasonal spring recipes like sweet heat, shrimp tempura bowls, garden spinach ricotta ravioli, and one pot creamy lemon dill chicken soup. This saves me so much time and effort because everything's pre-portioned, so I'm not spending a lot of time in the kitchen and I can spend time outside this spring. Because HelloFresh has 50 different dinner options. It's a lot less what's for dinner this week and more what am I gonna do with all this extra time? I treat myself every week to three HelloFresh meals instead of running out for fast food. You can go to HelloFresh right now and use the coupon code CLUTTERBUG16 to get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Again, that's HelloFresh.com and use the coupon code Clutterbug 16. Let's talk about memory for a second. Part of having ADHD is having a really crappy working memory. I forget everything all the time. I forget names. I could be reading an amazing book. I could not tell you the title, the author, or the names of any characters in the book. So I have to have hacks all the time to remember things. And one of my favorite things is having a phone case that has a wallet in it. I have the Find My Phone app, so if I lose my phone, I can quickly call it, my Alexa can call it, Joe can call it because I lose my phone all the time. But I am one of those people, if I have a purse and I'm in public, I will set my purse down somewhere and forget about it. So having my wallet and phone in one means I only have one thing I have to carry and keep track of. I can put it in my pocket, I always know where it is, and if I do lose it, which I do, I can have a lot of different devices call it for me. The other thing I lose all the time and forget where I put down is my keys. I leave these in my pocket of my coat or in pants or a jean jacket or sometimes I'll set it down on a hook or here, there and everywhere. So just getting a little inexpensive tile means that I can call my keys. This is helpful. I've set my keys down in stores quite a few often like on a shelf but I can quickly call it. It makes an alarm and it has a GPS tracker, so I always know exactly where my keys are. Let's talk about pills and vitamins for a second. I have Hashimoto's. If I don't take pills every day, I get really sick, but that doesn't mean I'll remember. I love a pill sorter, but it has to be a 30 day. I can't just have a seven day pill sorter because at the end of every seven days, it's such a pain to fill it that I just wouldn't. But 30 days means once a month, I spend 10 minutes and I leave this out on the counter. I also have an alarm that reminds me every night to take my pills, so there's no no way that I won't take them. This sets me up for success and if you forget to take vitamins and pills, you gotta get one of these. Another quick tip that I do to remember people's names, which I'm really, really bad at, is I've tried repeating their name over and over and over again in my mind, but even then it still slips out. I mean, I've known people for years and not know their name. But if I tie it to a story, I'm able to remember their name. So if I meet someone named Chris, I'm like, Chris, the boy you were in love with across the street your entire childhood. He isn't that Chris, but he's a Chris. So I look at him and I'm like, the boy you were in love with. And now every time I look at that Chris, that 
is the story I remember. Or Janet, I just met someone named Janet and I'm like, I will totally forget your name. Janet Jackson, boob fell out at the Super Bowl. Your boob fell out at the Super Bowl. And then when I see her, you know what I think? I think the chick whose boob fell out at the Super Bowl. That's Janet. I know this is weird. I know it's weird, but it works for remembering names. I think of a story, right, that I can tie to that name. So when I look at that person, I can't remember the name, but I can recall the story and then find the name that way. It's a weird little hack that I do, but it definitely works. So thank you so much for watching. Whether you have ADD or ADHD or not, I'm hoping you're finding some of these tips really helpful to keep you focused in life, to keep you more productive, and so that you have more time in your day for the things that matter. Thanks so much. Make sure you like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So my ADHD is quite severe and I wasn't diagnosed until I was a lot older, but it's really obvious. And because I rely so heavily on sort of technology to fill the gaps where my brains have giant Swiss cheese holes, without that technology, I really suffer. So here's an example. Last week, I'm really embarrassed. I'm going to tell you. Last week, I was going to the border because I was flying out the next morning to go to Baltimore for the conference. And I always use Google Maps because I suck at directions. I forget where to go. And, and even a paper, like I'm not good with written instructions. I need something to say, turn left 20 meters from now. Like step-by-step -step instructions while I'm driving. But my Google Maps wasn't working. It's only 20 minutes from my house to the bridge. I got lost four times on the way. Four times on the way. I'm driving down the expressway and I'm repeating, Huron Church cast, just get off on Huron Church, get off on Huron Church. And before you know it, I'm listening to Eminem, I'm rocking out, and I'm on Dougal. I'm on Dougal. Why did I? Because I'm in the habit of getting off on Dougal. So I had to like turn around to get back on the expressway, except I missed the ramp and I had to turn around again. And by this time I need a drink. So I stop at Starbucks because I'm very thirsty from getting lost. And then I'm back on the expressway and I'm like, here on church, here on church, here on church. A new song comes on. It's DMX. Oh, rest in peace, DMX. I'm like, in the hood, where the hood at? Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? And I look at a sign. God only knows how I'm like 20 minutes later and I'm on my way to Amosburg which is another city. I've missed my exit by 20 minutes at this point. So I call Joe and I'm panicking. Well, I'm, I'm never gonna make it. I'm never gonna make it there, Joe, because I can't use my phone. Why is my phone not working? I, I was hysterical, if I'm being honest. Not having the technology to rely on, having to rely on my brain to get me somewhere is a recipe for disaster. So he's walking me through it on the phone. So sweet. He's on like the phone with me. We get back. I get off on here on church. It's a crazy long line. I have to turn the radio off so I can focus on what I'm doing. I'm waiting in line. I'm going crazy. I'm super impatient. I see a McDonald's. I feel hungry. I get off and I have dinner and I'm looking at TikTok and I'm forgetting where I am and where I'm going and I'm enjoying my bad self. I get back in the van and it's like, Cash, you're supposed to be at the border to cross the border. It was almost three hours to drive what should have been 20 minutes. And this is normal for me. If I'm going to the grocery store and I don't have a list, it's very likely I'll get distracted by the dollar store and I'll go there first and I'll be like, I'll just run in and get some things. Look at all this cool stuff the dollar store has. And I'm taking pictures and I'm shopping and then I come home with all my purchases and Joe's like, where's the milk? gas and I totally forgot to go to the grocery store. And that's just part of living with severe ADHD, but it also can be pretty cool too. I have the ability to hyper-focus on things that I love. So I might not be able to follow a map or find my way somewhere by myself, but if I love something like organizing, I can do it for 12 hours straight with a smile on my face. So it isn't all bad. I'm I want to talk more about this because if you can relate to the inability to focus, to get started, to prioritize, I want you to know that you're not alone. Talk to your doctor. I wasn't diagnosed until I was 40 years old, but just getting that diagnosis makes me feel so much better about myself. I'm not a complete moron. I just have ADHD. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.